Thank you. Hello. Are you, are you still there? Let's try that again. Hello. Hello. Great. I've probably just broken one of Ted's rules by asking a question and getting you to, to shout out. But this is sort of about breaking rules. That's what we're going to do. Um, I am your last speaker of the day. That's good that you didn't cheer. But at the end of my talk, if you want to cheer, that's good as well. That's going to be back. There we go. Um, so, when I was 10 years old, one of my teachers asked me, what do I want to be when I grow up? And I said, I don't want to grow up. Because growing up means you've got to have a plan, doesn't it? And I just didn't want to have a plan. Now, having said that, I tried to make lots of plans. And I had a lot of help along the way, a lot of support in trying to make plans. But actually, none of them really worked out. It was a little bit chaotic, if anything. But it sort of served me well in a world that is a little bit chaotic, a little bit uncertain, and seemingly very, very complicated. This is me, by the way, a few years ago. And my hair has changed color since then. By the way, more than a few years ago, it would probably be fair to say. So perhaps the answer is that we teach disruption. It feels like we're in quite a disruptive time. Um, somewhat counterintuitive teachers teaching disruption. And counterintuitive to the educational norms, I would suggest. But we're living in a world full of disruption, aren't we? And also destruction. They're sort of interchangeable. If you are disrupting things, you might be destroying things. Disruptoying, we could call it. There we are, I've invented a new word. Everyone should invent a new word every day. Disruptoying, hashtag disruptoying. We could do a butterfly effect and see if we can disrupt the English language a little bit after today's session. Now, this isn't something new, though. Joseph Schumpeter, 1942, part of the Austrian School of Economics, although not Austrian, oddly enough, he sort of introduced this notion of creative destruction. He talked about the waves of creative destruction, different changes over time. And it feels like that now. It feels like we're at a very, very disrupted time. The sort of business models that we've got familiar with have been changing, and we've heard about some of that this evening. Things are moving very, very fast. Things that are familiar are no more. It is a different world. It is unique. This is different. Is it? Isn't this just one of those waves, one of those cycles? There have been lots of disruptions over time, be it the invention of automatic weapons, be it the invention of steam trains. There are cycles. So I would contend maybe it isn't different. But there are some subtle differences, which I think is what I find my graduates are really struggling with right now. They tell me they want to have a plan. They want to know where they're going. They need goals to aim at. But employers tell me we want graduates who are adaptable and flexible and resilient to cope with this uncertain sort of world. Notice on that graph that the timescales seem to be getting shorter. Things are speeding up, and we all feel it, I think. So what's happening right now? Lots of hockey stick type graphs. There's been an increase in trade Although, note, there's a little blip there at the end. Something has changed. Health is increasing around the world, and yet we still have parts of the world that suffer famine and pandemics. Poverty is declining, but if we put a graph up between the difference between rich and poor, we'd get more like a crocodile-type shape, I would think. Literacy is growing, but maybe we need new forms of literacy. Literacy of new media, for example. Democracy, increasing over time, but again, there's a worrying little stutter at the end. The world is a more peaceful place at present, but it sometimes feels like that might not last. We all know the population is increasing. That really is a hockey stick. And yet in certain parts of the world, they're now predicting significant drops in population, for example, in Japan. And this, and it was always so, we know there are limited resources. Resources are running out. If there's a theme today, well, there is. It's inspiring change. Um, but the other theme that I've heard is around needing to do something different, needing to change the sort of capitalist system and the approach because of this issue. And I think that's what a lot of those blips, 
status judders are in all those graphs. It's coming to a time where maybe we do need to do a bit of disruption to stop that getting worse. It certainly feels different, faster, more complex, more competitive. And again, that's what my graduates tell me. So how do we prepare for that world? How do I, as a teacher, help graduates to prepare for that world? Um, 20 years ago, my tutors, and in fact a TV advert that I remember, um, told us we had to be prepared to have four different business models in one day. I don't know if anyone remembers that advert, because you need to change so much. Now that, I don't know whether that is a niche market or trying to appeal to everyone, but that sounds like a hell of a Saturday night out. <laughs> I don't even know how you'd get a cab from there, really. But you can see that notion of flexibility, trying to be everything, trying to be different. And maybe that's part of trying to teach disruption. Maybe the social media rise where we all have a status, this is the meal I just ate and it was different to yours, but the place, plates look the same when they're empty. Maybe that need to be different is why that I think teaching disruption is becoming more of interest to students, I'm finding that. Problem is, do we all want to be disruptive? Do we all want to be different? You know, if we're all different, if we're all seeking something different, maybe there could be some unintended consequences, the rise of the different, if you like, and that could produce some challenges. Now, as an investor, as well as a teacher, investing in pupils' time, but also in pupil who set, pupils who set up businesses, that's really challenging, because how can you pick the winners in that fast-moving, complex world. It's really tough. And a world where the entrepreneurs, the folk heroes, the people that you see on telly, well, some of those aren't necessarily always winners. Sorry, Elon, but I love that photo. Now, arguably, there are some individuals who have uh, characteristics which make them more ideally suited to the art and science of being entrepreneurial and therefore perhaps being disruptive or disruptoying, the new word we've invented. Um, but I also suspect for some of them it makes them a pain in the backside to work for. So that probably shouldn't and can't be all of us. We need to stop the snowflake generation nonsense. Every time we say it, we're reinforcing a falsehood. I'm not a snowflake and neither are you. Stop telling people that. But we are trying to cope with a really challenging set of circumstances. And I've got a proposition as to one way that maybe we can do that within education. I was talking to um, a friend of mine's son. Uh, I think he's 13 years old. He's, he's vibrant, he's, he's full of excitement, he's got the whole world in his hands, he's got the future in his hands. And um, he said to me, Ross, um, he knows me, he said to me, um, Ross, tell me a joke. So I thought, okay, I've got to tell him a joke. Right. So I said, well, I was speaking to a student the other day, and I said to the student, how many university lecturers does it take to change a light bulb? And they said, is it in the exam? <laughs> Thank you. You laugh far more than he did. I don't think he got it. And I said, go on, then your turn. You tell me a joke. And what he did was he reached into his pocket, and he took out his mobile phone, and he started dib-dobbing, I call it, dib 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 dob 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 I said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm dialing into Google. Tell me a joke. Exactly. A little bit scary. What's this? I'm breaking those TED rules again. It's a real question. What's this? Is that, someone say a mirror? Mirror? A frame? No, 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 no. It's, it's a picture of a mirror. It's not a real mirror. It's a picture of a frame. Now, it is a mirror, though, to sort of for you to look around that world that you're living in, that context where my 13-year-old uh, friend dialed into a mobile phone. You know, the context we're in right here, right now, is me stood on the, on the stage as some sort of sage talking at you, which is really strange. We have universities with modular systems, with traditional classrooms, things like that. So what I would contend, and this is by way of a conclusion, you'll be relieved to know, that to do this thing around coping with complexity and teaching disruption more effectively, there needs to be disruption of the conventional classroom. 
the modular, siloed way of arguably learning for and teaching to an assessment. There should be flexibility in our teaching and our students learning, therefore, where resilience is challenged by the unconventional and failure is a positive. What a great way to learn. I won't do it like that again. Now, my own personal experience in just one module where I'm allowed to do this at the minute is that allowing students to design their own way of being assessed and what they want to do to be assessed engenders an appreciation of risk, independence for those students, choice, and fundamentally managing change within an institution that inevitably has boundaries. Just like we all did as children before someone said, don't do that. In the last run of the module where I was able to do this, Students took on a vast variety of subjects, diverse subjects. One was mobile phone addiction, no mobile phobia. Some of you might be feeling it now. Don't worry, you can check it in just a few minutes. Um, a new entrepreneurial test, future of cryptocurrency, one of them did. Um, a project to help universities innovate and a creative space innovation project. As you can see, some of the students got into it more than others, I would say. Now. My little conclusion here for the, your whole day, um, which I think has been fantastic, I think you've had some fantastic speakers before me, um, some really interesting things. In my view, the best people to drive disruption, to challenge and to cope with this complex system that we're working within, is, the best people are the students. I absolutely believe that. And the students on this module created the module, not me. I just happened to be there. If we don't think that as tutors, then we ourselves are about to be disrupted. And the final slide of the day is a thank you slide, but it's thank you from me to you, because this sage on the stage stuff that you've just heard for the last two or three hours, you now go away and take that and talk with each other and do something with it, so that we reverse the traditional TED approach. Thank you very much.